I'm Salas Hanjipalu, I'm one of the directors of the Probation Institute and also the interim chief executive. Uh, perhaps it's best to start with a, a, a short historical perspective. In 1876, Frederick Rayner made a five shilling donation to the Church of England Temperance Society. This was to help break the cycle of offence after offence, sentence after sentence. This initiative created the voluntary role of the court missionary. In 1907, the Probation Service was formally established with the Probation Offenders Act. This put the then voluntary arrangements onto a statutory footing. 124 men and 19 women were appointed as probation officers. What probation is today, of course, is a good deal different. But also, a good deal has stayed the same. In particular, probation's core values and ethics, drawing inspiration from what was the problem then, and what is the problem now? Breaking the cycle of reoffending, supporting and guiding offenders to lead useful, law abiding lives. Probation now has a role in courts, in prisons, and of course in the community, working with the police and many other organisations to supervise and support the rehabilitation of offenders. Today's probation employs, directly or indirectly, some 20,000 persons and looks after more than 200,000 offenders a year. That this is done well is not in question. Probation trusts have secured many independent awards, including, in 2011, the British Quality Foundation's coveted award, the Gold Medal for Excellence, given to the probation service as a whole. However, no organisation can stand still. There is an obvious gap in the current arrangements, with the majority of those released from short custodial sentences receiving little or no systematic supervision or support following release. And surprisingly, this group also has the highest rates of reoffending. The government's plans to restructure the organisation of probation services, creating a more diverse environment of providers, are intended to close this gap. While this approach has proved controversial, there has been universal agreement that the strength of probation in the past and going forward to the future is the professionalism, knowledge, skill and commitment of those who work in it. We welcome the clear statements from ministers and others about supporting the skills and professional growth of those who in the future will be in the 21 community rehabilitation companies and the National Probation Service. We also welcome the support that Jeremy Wright, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State for Justice, has personally given to the creation of the Probation Institute to establish a framework for the professional development, training and skills and growth in this important area. As Jonathan has just said, it's worth underlining that the creation of the Probation Institute, at least the concept of what would be in such an institute, has been advocated for quite a while. And as he has indicated, plainly its time has come. So what will it do? The partner organisations, the Probation Chiefs Association, the Probation Association, NAPA and Unison, from whom you'll hear more uh, in a moment, have worked hard over the past year to articulate a vision for the Institute, one that we think, at this stage of its development, commands widespread support. We have done this in discussion with many organisations, some of which are represented here today in the audience, including academics, probation partners in the community, such as the police, local authorities, prospective owners in the, of the community um, rehabilitation companies, and with the Ministry of Justice. First and foremost, the Institute will be an independent organisation, not part of government, becoming the recognised centre of excellence for probation practice. This means applying rigorous standards to the assessment of research and other evidence, and its implications for the delivery of services that protect the public, and rehabilitate offenders. We think that independence is an essential feature so that the Institute is seen by many stakeholders as an objective and credible advocate for professional and practice issues. As a professional body, the Institute will provide the leadership needed to develop a strong probation profession across private, public and voluntary sectors, creating the framework for unifying the probation workforce as a whole and enhancing the status of the profession along with employers, commissioners, training organisations, Her Majesty's Inspector of Probation, and others with a relevant role, the Institute will contribute to the setting of standards and the professional development of its members. 
the creation of a voluntary register of practitioners capturing the qualifications, skills and experience of the workforce and supporting continuing professional development will give the necessary discipline to maintaining professional standards, underpinning the quality of what is done and promoting confidence in the system. Membership to the Institute will be voluntary and open both to individual practitioners and corporate organisations concerned with the rehabilitation of offenders. The Institute will provide a safe space for discussion and resolution of the many issues that face probation's workforce and the professional development of those who work in the sector. We also think that the Institute needs to have a role as an advocate for probation, explaining the nature of its work and objectives and, outcomes, and objectives and outcomes that it achieves. That the, probation, that the work of probation is not well understood as it should be, has been clear for some time, and we see that the Institute is making an important contribution to help rectify that. Of course, an Institute without members will be an empty shell. Growing the Institute's membership is an immediate priority for us. Alongside that, and in support of making the case for membership, we want to make early progress in articulating the Institute's offer on, including, the development of skills, competences and training for those who currently work in the sector, workforce planning and recruitment, developing the voluntary practitioner register, engaging with academics and uh, with the academic and research sector, giving substance to the idea of a centre of excellence, for example, commissioning thematic reviews of various aspects of effective practice, a full programme of conference and other events that brings private practitioners together, and developing collaborative relationships with probation's partners, organisations that crucially need to play a role, such as the police, mental health, drug and alcohol services, housing and employment. There is, of course, very much to do still. Establishing a new organisation is a daunting task, and we are clear that this is to be done in stages involving stakeholders. But we want very much to signal through this event today that we are open for business.